The first exercise that we'll be doing for vibrato are knuckle warm-ups. The reason why we want to warm up our knuckles is we're going to be using small, tiny parts of our fingers that we haven't used before, and we want to make sure that they're nice, loose, and relaxed and free of tension before we start playing with vibrato so that we can prevent any possible injury. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take with my left hand, my first finger, and my thumb. I'm going to punch the tips together just like this, and then I'm going to make that joint flat and then curve or down and then up, down and then up. Let's do that together eight times in a row. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's move on to middle finger or second finger. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next exercise that we'll be doing, we'll open our elbows and relieve any tension in our fingers and wrist. I'm going to start in first position with my elbow up nice and high and my thumb in the thumb place. And I'm going to slide with my thumb all the way down the neck until I stop at the shoulder of my instrument. And I'm going to tap my fingers on my strings three times. Tap, tap, tap. Then I'm going to slide back to first position and we'll tap three more times. Tap, tap, tap. Slide up. Tap, tap, tap. Slide back. Tap, tap, tap. When we talk about vibrato on cello and bass, we can kind of use the image of a royal wave to help us know what kind of motion we should be doing with our arms. So a royal wave kind of looks like this, where you've got your arm rotating, your wrist rotating with your arm, and my fingers following suit, and we're going to apply that to our strings now. You're not going to need your bow, but you will need a metronome. With my second finger on D string, my elbow up nice and high, my thumb right where my thumb needs to be, I also want to lastly double check that I've got a space in between my first finger knuckle and the neck of my instrument. If I'm collapsed like this, not only will I be out of tune, but it's really hard to move my arm at all and we need lots of room for motion for vibrato. So I want to make sure that there's that space in between the knuckles and the neck of the instrument. So I'm really creating a connection between my second finger and the string and my thumb and the neck. Then I'm going to rotate my arm like I would for a royal wave, rotating down towards the bridge, up towards the neck, bridge, neck, bridge, neck. And that's the kind of motion that we'll be using for our vibrato. The best way to practice this motion is with a metronome. I'm going to set my metronome to 60, and then I'm going to do different rhythms with that royal wave motion on my second finger. Let's do it together. I'm going to start with quarter notes. Ready, go. Down, up, 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 down, up. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. The next exercise that we'll do will combine the sliding motion that we did earlier with the royal wave that we were talking about as well. So I'm going to start in first position and I'm going to have my second finger down this time, just barely touching a string with hardly any weight on the string. I'm not pushing down so that the string touches the fingerboard. I'm going to slide up to the neck and come back. And then as we go by, my shift is going to start to get smaller and faster. Smaller and faster, faster and faster, still loose and relaxed until my finger sticks and my arm continues to move and we've applied that royal wave-like motion. The next exercise is a D major scale in whole notes, but with that measured vibrato motion. You'll need your bows this time. Ready, go. exercise that we'll be doing is a scale in whole notes with vibrato this time. So there's no measure to it, no rhythm, just vibrato. Set your metronome to 60 and begin. Ready, go. Mm -hmm. 